Welcome to Rage You Nerds, I'm Mr. Kack, and today, myself, my brother Jared, and our friend TJ. We are the nerds, and we'll be discussing, breaking down some of the images, articles, and the trailer, frame by frame, of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. We are big Ghostbuster fans. If you're a big Ghostbusters fan and you want to figure out what's happening in this, what, what's what's going on in this thing? What what is that? What are they doing? What could that mean? Or who this is? Who 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 is this? Who is that guy? Um, we are going to dissect some of the new information that's currently out there for a movie that's coming out in March that we are so passionate about. If you're passionate about this as too, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, but keep on watching and let us know in the comments below your own thoughts, theories and facts that maybe we missed about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. All right, enjoy. All right, we are transitioning on. I know there's not a really good segue from going to honoring someone that has passed into just whatever other asinine stuff you want to talk about. But while our ass is a nine, our faces are twos, and we're going to go ahead and move on to the Ghostbusters. Because there has been more information come out, boys. Some of it, maybe it's hyperbole to say is damning. <laughs> But uh, I'm I'm upset. <laughs> I'm a little bummed out. I'm a little bummed out by this by this fact that it's not Oscar. But in the first release, we had someone come in and comment because TJ and I tend to make much ado about apparently nothing when it comes to the uh, skinny pencil neck and how he should have been Oscar. And, and someone responded, "He's actually named Lars." And I was like, that, "That's stupid. <laughs> Why would you come in?" And say something so god awful stupid in my in my <laughs> comment section. So then I did anything a reasonable person would do before going off on that person, and I Google searched it <laughs> to find out. Yes, that person is now currently named Lin Lars Pinfield. He is described as a techie guy who helps with all the creations and gadgets, much like an Egon Spangler, but isn't part of the Spangler family. Big letdown, but it's, I'm not letting it take my joy. I'm not letting it take my joy. So, so aside from the bummed out at it not being Oscar and that we really need to resolve this Oscar issue, and yes. that goes to feed into anyone's idea that just believes Ghostbusters 2 doesn't exist in this universe. Uh, they're not giving us Oscar for a reason. Baby was yeah. never born. <laughs> but, <laughs> it wasn't real. But, okay, so once I move past that, all right, you got his character. It seems like Patton Oswalt's character is also going to be somewhere in an association or will be brought into this association where it's clear that Winston has developed a Ghostbuster organization. It's like a little agency now. It's not just the four guys kind of DIYing it with their scientific brains. They've brought in other people, and Winston has funds, and he's the, he's the monetary deus ex machina of this mm -hmm. new franchise of ghost busting and so now we just have a new person his name is Lars and he makes stuff explains why he grabbed the orb like a dumbass and started to freeze his hand but he probably created the contraption that the orb was in that they were trying to study it so TJ how are you feeling about this not being Oscar <laughs> I guess let's cross that bridge first Jared uh if you have more you want to say on it we'll hit you next but TJ you haven't said nothing what do you think about Lars okay so, full disclosure, after we did our, what was that, Monday, we did the trailer? Yes, reaction. Monday. Yep. Uh, sometime this week, I woke up early, and I was like, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna go and IMDB Ghostbusters uh, Frozen Empire. And I went, and I saw the dude, and saw his name was Lars Pinhead, or whatever. <laughs> um, and I'm like... Well, that's a bummer. And I just kind of let it go. And that's kind of how I, it's kind of how I am right now. I'm just kind of I'm just gonna, I'm just going to let it go. You know, there's there's more pressing things going on in this world right now that I can't. OK, screw it. I hate this. I really do. <laughs> we need we need Oscar. We need some kind of resolution. We need something that says Ghostbusters 2, something on screen that shows that it's canon. All right, you can't just have the the writer director come on, you know, do an interview and say, "Well, it's canon because there was a toaster." I mean, yeah, but there's got to be something. There's got to be something in in this other than raise a cult and the toaster. 
the show's Ghostbusters too. And I was really hoping it was, I was, it was really hoping it was Oscar and it was going to be Oscar. And, and then it's not Oscar. And it's kind of like, it's like a kick to the chest. I mean, it took, you know, it just kind of, it, it, it took your breath away for a second. You're like, son of a bitch. It's not Oscar. But then there's hope. There's always hope until the movie comes out. I don't a hundred percent believe it. You know, I mean, there's, there's, there's people put, names character names on imdb you know and then and then you know it could just be like well we'll we'll name him lars pinhead put it on imdb and that'll quell all this oscar rumor or whatever and then you sent me the article you son of a bitch you sent me the (laughs) article and i read it and i'm like well it's a published article his name is pinhead or whatever what is his name lars pinman pinfield pinfield Pinfield. 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 Pinhead. So, um, and the thing that irritates me the most is like the first two trailers, like you, you, he's featured in the trailer. So it's like, why do that? Unless, yeah. you know, he's got, you know, it doesn't have any speaking parts and doesn't do any of this. Just kind of like a guy sitting there, you know, in a trailer. And you're like, who is this guy? And it gets you talking about who is this guy, which I guess that's kind of the point. You want people to talk about it, but at the same time, like, Give us closure. Oh, yeah. Which is why I cannot wait till this movie comes out so we can go watch it and I can finally see if there's any kind of closure to the River of Slime. So we're going we're gonna to talk some theories. I asked you boys to maybe think of some theories. I don't know if you have some. I honestly just opened up a picture from that article and now I have a new theory and I don't know if I like it anymore. But that, that picture, I didn't notice it at first. That picture that was included in that article I sent you guys is actually very interesting when you open it up and make it a much bigger picture. Uh, but Jared, are you bummed out? I know you. I know you. You gave your little thought there, but do you have anything further you would like to expand on about this not being someone named after a hot dog? <laughs> named after a hot dog, you poor, <laughs> poor man. So, um. Here, here is, here is, because to the to the best of my knowledge, and I haven't looked just incredibly into this a whole lot, but I believe uh, Will Duschendorf, uh, one of the twins that originally played Oscar, uh, is is actually still an actor, and I think he does some martial art anyway. But I'm wondering if maybe, because it all seems like, and this kid is way younger. Um, it looks like yeah, then, yeah. then uh, grown up maybe Oscar would be, but I'm wondering if maybe he was approached about it, and because for those of you who don't know, uh, Oscar was played by two twins, one named Henry, one named Will, and uh, one died in 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm wondering if if maybe that part was originally wrote for him. And maybe he turned it down, not turned it down, but I don't know. I just, I feel like it was, that was kind of the direction they were going to lead us in, but maybe they just couldn't make it work. Um, so, um, but am I, I wouldn't say that I'm upset, uh, nearly as upset as you two. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I, I wanted it to be the case, but I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't hanging my hat on that. I was, that was, that was an afterthought for me. Personally, um, <clears throat> would it still have been cool for it to be? Yes, but to me, that was kind of like the that would have been like the you know the cherry on top. You know, the cake is still or pie, whatever we put uh, cherry on top of cupcake, perhaps. Um, you know, the meal is still going to be good. It just didn't have that one little extra thing that no. it's still okay without or still good without. But that would have made it just a little bit better, you know. And so that's kind of where I'm at on it. Yeah. So we we discussed this a while back, but Empire was coming out with their their two cover editions that were going to feature Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and within it they were going to give some information. Well, Lars' name and Pat Oswalt character's name and Camille Nanjani's name and a little <laughs> bit more into what podcast is doing, all that came out with that. But one of these photos included in Empire that I'm now looking at from that article I shared with you boys, because I used, I opened that article, I found that article on my phone, so I didn't really think to look at anything too deeply. Boys, do you want me to 
spoil something with said picture and answer some questions we've already raised in this moment? Kind of. So before we do that. Yes. Yep. I'm still not 100% sold on the fact that it's not Oscar because we don't know who Oscar's father was. That's could true. Be that, That's true. That violinist from the first movie and that violinist could have been German and he could be Oscar <laughs> Lars Pinhead. Or You're right. Pin- You're so <laughs> now that I so, think about it, we don't even know Oscar's last name. Exactly. We don't. We don't. So, so here we go. He could be like, Yo, oh, thanks, Lars. Well, actually, my name's Oscar in the movie. We that could happen. It could still happen. I have hope. So no. my mom calls cre- me Oscar. Crush that hope. <laughs> All right. So I don't know if this crushes that hope, but it opens the door to answer a question TJ already levied t- tonight. Uh, so this is the photo. This is the photo, and boys, I really want you to take it in, especially right here. Oh. What we see oh, in the background, the slime cannon. So we, so, so we have a, a set photo from where I assume this is just a kind of the the scientific operation side, the the engineering science tech side of the new Ghostbuster Enterprise. You see that uh, Lucky right here is wearing a flight suit that has a geared version of the Ghostbusters emblem. So that's why I think this is like a department within Winston's new organized kind of business-like ghost busting. It, they're basically a paranormal military, I assume, at this point. Uh, <laughs> but in the background, you see a lady who I hope is a callback to the assistant that Egon had from Ghostbusters 2 uh, spraying down a, I'm assuming, <laughs> intern in the background <laughs> with the par- with the positively charged slime from Ghostbusters 2. So the blaster, the slime, the slime blaster itself, it's from Ghostbuster 2, the slime itself, which now opens the door. I'm kind of excited that we might, for better or worse, I would say that if there's still any of that slime lingering around, something called the death chill, unleashing a horde of ghosts and killing off a bunch of people and freezing over in New York, might cause some angsty emotions again. And maybe we see the third version of this franchise retouch and reconnect with the whole uh, river of slime of it all. But if nothing else, Ghostbusters 2 now looks thoroughly confirmed. Uh, So I was also going to point out how there seems to be a tech division and they have their own logo. The last thing I was going to say, looking at this and looking at our Penfield, as you see his last name badge on his, but that, as TJ said, we don't know what Oscar's last name could be. But now that I'm looking at this guy in, in design, his glasses, the way his hair's all goofed up, the fact that he's science boy, um, he looks like Egon from the real Ghostbusters. And I think, that, I think that's what his character is supposed to be. I think they wanted to just have a huge, constantly present Egon from the real Ghostbusters because it's already been touched on how this is supposed to be, I mean... Camille, Camille Nunjani has described it as they wanted to make a real Ghostbusters episode for a movie. And how how better to just tease that over than to literally have people that look like characters mm-hmm. from the movie. Uh, you have the different opportunities for flight suits that are going to have. They'll have a red jacket with it on there, which is very which is very cartoon, right? Where they would have outfit changes that would still be Ghostbusters embroidered and patched up. So... Uh, it, that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> that makes me feel a little yeah. bit better is that Ghostbusters, it's not just the four guys anymore. It looks like it's a big thing going on, and they're just blasting people with slime <laughs> in the back. Uh, so, Gotta they, take it's, one for the team here, intern. It's a big step up from Peter shocking some guy while trying to hook up with a lady to them blowing people with slime. Take that with any context you will. But, I mean, that's just one nugget. That's just one. That is just, it is fascinating how much you can take and and run with just looking at one picture. There's no telling if this is actually going to be in the finished film. (laughs) Maybe maybe this moment is cut. (laughs) This moment's already been cut. That's why they included it in Empire. But just from this moment alone, you just have so much to glean from. One thing that we didn't talk about, but he's present. Both of them are present. You have Podcast, who looks five years older at this point. Uh, And that's almost (laughs) actually true, I think, from when they they would have recorded the actual Ghostbusters Afterlife to now. Um, And Ray. And if you read that article, guys, you would know that Podcast is actually in New York working with Ray 
not with Ghostbusters type stuff, really, but with their new podcast uh, called, I think it was called Repossessed. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Where, where, they're, where they're podcasting, uh, looking at, touching, messing with uh, haunted or unique artifacts that are brought to mm-hmm. them or that they find, which makes a lot of sense with Ray's occult. He probably has a constant hub of things to, to look at from his own knickknack uh, library of fun, goofy stuff. Uh, but that's how this orb gets incorporated. It was probably part of podcast and Ray's episode. Camille Nanjani finds it somehow, brings it to Ray. We see that in the trailer. Uh, but now we understand how podcast is involved. Uh, someone on our YouTube video question, why is podcast and lucky in New York? They almost shot her father who was a cop and, and they should have no reason to be in New York. But also like, I don't know if your hero Ray Stant said, uh, you want to come live in New York and do a podcast with me? That kid, I, well, I don't know if he has parents. He probably said yes. <laughs> well, and keep in mind, too, though, like the uh, Ghostbusters. So, I mean, this is probably there's probably not there's probably going to be a several year jump between the last movie and this movie. Obviously. Correct. You'd hope or you think. Yeah. You'd think. So, like, it's 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 reasonable to understand why the Spangler family would move back to New York. Yes. Right. But like for someone like Lucky, you know, she was what? like 16 17 so even if there's a two-year difference that's 18 she can go and do whatever do her own thing yeah like take a job in new york you know uh podcast that's the question that's kind of like how like his parents just moved to new york suddenly like it seems like winston again winston could be the deuce ex machina of everything he could just be like i'm gonna pay for your whole families to live in new york Okay. Yeah, I mean that's something. <laughs> if he if he's like the big businessman, he owns a company probably, and he can be like, offer the parents a job, bring the kid up there, and the kid gets a job at Ghostbusters HQ. And even yeah. if they don't tell us, even if they just like it opens up with them in New York, and they never tell us why they're up there, don't care, don't care one bit. <laughs> Let me, you know, just uh, I'll use my imagination as how they got there, and the internet will never tell us, and they just they're there, they're in New York. So no, I don't have any hangups at all with this. Um, but yeah, so I think that's interesting that. It seems like more and more real Ghostbusters is going to be a heavy influence, and I am excited as all heck for that, boys. Yes. We're not, Chris. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> we we want less real Ghostbusters. Give us the one with the gorilla. <laughs> Which I've actually watched some episodes of that on YouTube, and I'm like, you know what? This was shit. <laughs> Why did people watch this? <laughs> and anyone likes this better than the real Ghostbusters, you have problems. Look at this trailer once yet again, and if you see something that you would like to to spend some yarns about, about a spectral locomotive, spectral locomotion. Please, <laughs> please, please feel free to do so as we slow it down and, and just kind of just kind of let her rip. Uh, so this is just the, the precursor to... Well, actually... I say that as I'm going to just try to dismiss it, but I don't know if I am. Anything there? Not really. Ah, oh, Ray's got Ray's got the goggles back. So Ray Ray deserves to have the goggles on. He's the one I always think of with them, so I'm glad to see him back. Yeah. What does she have? I can't tell. It's too blurry. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't tell either. Are we on? Yeah, we're on, we're on 1080. Well, actually, can we bump it up even higher? Is that a thing? Four billion. Ten eighty premium. I'm sure I have to pay for that. Probably. All right. Let's see. Ooh, spooky, spooky, spooky. Product placement for Master Mastercard. Say Mastercard got their Mastercard. logo in there. <laughs> and we're missing out on this. Oh, let's see. So you'd like to I think just, that I, that I scene is going to be early in the movie because we have several uniform changes. It seems. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really feel like we're going to have Ghostbusters. I really feel like the car chase has to be like after we do a flashback to show uh, just kind of vestiges of the, the evil that's coming. We then cut to modern day and it's the Ecto just hauling ass down the road. OK, wait, I never noticed that beginning. Uh, so we have Trevor up in the attic, which seems to be from the trailer that we all watched and we all kind of started to think about this. Uh, he's up there, but we're pretty sure this is where he finds Slimer, right? We, we, yeah. TJ and yeah. I believe, TJ very strongly is like, I think that's the attic of the firehouse. Um, and I think he is correct. And I think that might yeah, be Yeah, because the, the basement hole? would be the, like, the, uh, 
Well, there's a ladder uh, there. But I guess that gets on top of the roof. I guess that gets on top of the roof. So that does still make sense. Yeah, because there's sunlight coming in, it looks like. Yep, that doesn't yep, yep, look yep. like um, uh, like a light light from a light bulb. But yeah. TJ, TJ was the first one in our trailer reaction to really pop this. So you got some thoughts here, TJ? Uh, no, I think it just more confirms the theory that Slimer's hiding up in the attic. Um, and this probably is like a, a precursor to him meeting Slimer. I don't know. I need to see the shirt that he's wearing whenever he gets slimed. I think yeah, it's the same shirt. Then all of this is probably one sequence. It, it seems like he's up in the attic for some reason. I mean, he's moody. He's Finn Wolfhard. It doesn't <laughs> seem like he came up there looking specifically for Slimer. He just happens to find Slimer. Yeah. But do so you notice on the box the it has floor, a Ghostbusters, yeah. Ghostbusters 2? Ghostbusters 2. Ghostbusters uh -oh. 2. So I, what is it? It says artwork. So I, I am very curious at what he's in. He's got a magazine there. And it looks like it's probably going to definitely be Ghostbusters related. But I'm very curious as to what it is he's looking at up here and what he kind of finds. But, yeah, what is that? It's just, yeah, like, what is that? Is he was it, kind of looking at some of the it, other stuff in the background, too. Cause is like, it a trap? Is it the Geiger meter? Like, we haven't seen the Geiger the Geiger counter. I, Geiger I'd like counter. to see the Geiger counter pop back up. That would be a cute little reference, too. But I don't know. I can't tell if that is – if that's a radio, if that's the – the pedal of the trap. I mean, that could be a trap. And that Didn't could be he a have pedal. a trap in the whenever he was trying to? Because yeah, he's he because trying he, to he's trying to slime. he's trying to capture slime. <laughs> he had a trap, and then when he gets slimed, so I think that could be the trap. It doesn't okay, look like right. a trap though. It's just hard to tell because it is blurry for, yeah. for for being 1080p. Yeah. Where's all my p going? Where's all my p? But I think that's it. Oh, okay, so he's looking at this. So that'd be great. I, you know, if we have a small moment where I know I haven't been the biggest Trevor fan or Finn Wolfhard fan, but if he's up in the attic and he starts finding stuff that, that has him thinking about his grandfather, because we really didn't see the connection him and his grandfather yeah. had in the first one. It other was all than, about like, Phoebe. Yeah, other than like the fixing the car kind of thing. That was really about it. But if we see more emotional tugs now with Trevor involved, it'll probably soften my view on Trevor, if we're just being honest, which is a incredibly great move to do to make <laughs> me like that little turd. Uh, but that's going to make me cry. That, that This moment's going to tear me up, I bet. Uh, and you had a miner hanging out of the side of the car. <laughs> right here is when Jared figured out, is that William Atherson? <laughs> 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 now is he the mayor that looks like the mayor's office it does I, I appreciate that uh mayor maybe walter peck just has a little clothesline bar here and just has like ready to go white shirts for under his <laughs> under his vest <laughs> and there's the popo they probably got hauled in like all, all classic of that ghostbusters Yep. Like pause it for a second, but like all yep. of that, like the the car with like them busting, like that would probably all set up the movie, kind of thing, yeah. leading to them in here. So remember this space. Someone in our trailer reaction video called out that they thought the flashback that we assume is a flashback, where we see people frozen and a fireman come in and touch them, and the person just explodes into glass in, into icy shards. They don't think that's a flashback. They thought it was from this moment in this office and that it probably is Walter Peck and some of his guys. No, uh, it has to be a flashback because it's like the I old see. time. Like... I thought so, too. But yeah, we, we, we got the we got the trailer. This reminds me of Ghostbusters uh, with the the skyline as a uh, <laughs> feel. Oh. Feel. Let's so say take it Do back for a minute. Magic, magic. Do you believe in magic? I was going to read what that paper said. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. See if it has any significance. The world's weirdest <laughs> <laughs> newspaper stories. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a movie including something that's, that's a, like, oh, that's I hope we book. make a sequel. Okay. <laughs> that's a book of Ray and Ray's occult before the guy brings it in. Okay. <laughs> but true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder where he finds that. That'll be interesting. Cause he could be, he could be, he could be a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? We've yeah. we've always had a human that sided with the evil in every iteration of Ghostbusters. Yeah. Evil. Evil. A child. <laughs> a child. Podcast. Yeah. Podcast looking too old now. All right, so here's Nerd Boy. Maybe she's part of the Nerd Division. Uh, and there's our little Orby Orb. Uh, 
back in this general area, people are getting blasted with positively charged slimes. <laughs> now, I mean, the first movie was Lucky more of like the mechanical kind of person, or so I what? Could see, I could she see was... her working in like R and D. Did did we ever get anything about Lucky other than she so. was strong willed? independent girl boss type right that seemed to be yeah. the thing yeah. she 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 wasn't the love interest to trevor uh she was the one putting up with trevor and if you know if, if she eased up on him maybe she would um but yeah it seemed like she was more of a more of a, like a, a life wise type. like she seemed just confident like she was just a confident person is what yeah i remember from her um so podcast she could be like managing the uh, r&d department <laughs> or, or maybe, or maybe she does have a passion there. I maybe I need to watch Ghostbusters Afterlife and look for the lucky side of things to see if there is something I missed there. Because one thought I had is, yeah, she's up for like an internship, and Winston's footing the bill for it. And like, I mean, that I want to put that on my resume. <laughs> well, like you said though, like in the, when we were looking at the picture, like she had the gear on on the logo. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I think she's. I I agree with you, TJ. I think this is probably a time skip enough that she's eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So she she could be wherever she wants in life, realistically. And that's not Oscar, as we're all aware now, <laughs> sadly. Or not. TJ still hasn't given up hope. Okay. So Did we see the blocks do something. Yeah. Let me can I kick this down one more notch? So watch watch the block or watch the sphere. And watch the letters kind of closest to us. Right. When we go back inside. And yeah, you did that, Lucky. You did that. Oh, yeah. yeah there was some oh. movement there. That's a good eye. I didn't even see that. It could so, be our... Uh... In the picture that we're looking at, like, he had his hand in his arm in a sling. So that would explain Maybe that. Maybe that's... <clears throat> I started to say, I bet that's why. Because that would have been the same hand. Yep, 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 yep. Good job, boys. Which means the slime, the slime blasting happens after this. After this, yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice. All right. So this is the Gozer. No, this isn't Gozer's That's temple, the... but it looks like Gozer's temple. Yeah. This is the the horn dude. So the horns are already on this guy. So we, TJ and I had questioned because we see him go and kind of collect the horns. Our thought was like, did he need to go out and find those? I still think that there's something to him being separated from these horns. I think that's a key to the to horns something. are a source of the power kind of thing. Maybe, like, yeah, yeah, definitely. But this this gives me like because at in Oklahoma when they made the, the you know the whole wall sculpture temple to Zul, this is yeah. very much how that looked. So this is probably going to be, I mean not Zul to Gozer. This is probably going to be something like this is some kind of creature on Gozer's level, but not Gozer. Which I can dig. I'm all about bringing in new stuff. And this little turd, he's not Oscar. But this is after he injured his hand. And this is Camille and Podcast. And we're just having us a fun little chat with Ray where he's giving you some ominous ass messages. Oh, see, that's a horn. That Those looks the horns. That looks like like it could be with the gold, like maybe in a museum or something. Do you think that this is like a pocket, like this is what's inside of the golden orb? Like, you know, how, kind of like how the genie's lamp is just like this vast universe inside. Yeah. Or like, or like, uh, you guys like Doctor Who, mm -hmm. how it looks like, like a phone a to everyone until you walk inside of it. And then all of a sudden you see this much bigger space. I do wonder if this is what happens whenever that orb finally opens, whether it's by this creature's design or maybe they stumble upon it because we but we also see them enter this point from a door in what seems to be someone's apartment in the teaser trailer. Yeah. Because we see Camille and Johnny open the door and there's kind of this gold plated one. Is this something that he has that Camille, maybe there's more than meets the eye to his character that maybe he's collecting or hoarding these things. And he's got some tie uh, to maybe the ancientness of whatever this creature is. Yeah. Cause there's definitely some weapons on the wall behind it too. Nope. 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 You well, say, and you like know, that. like with the first movie, like with the first movie, you know, a lot of the stuff that happens like in the refrigerator, it's like it's a pocket dimension. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that whole like, you know, hey, I'm going to open up the cupboard and walk into this pocket dimension, which is this, which yeah. is where dude finds his horns. 
I'm still not. I'm still. I think I'm further on the train that I think Camille and Johnny might be our human uh, traitor. Traitor. Janos. Janos. A child. I like, got, the, I like the ice effect. Yeah, I mean, he's getting his horns and he's putting them back right. on. Which I still think means that there's something to removing them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this, this is this is old timey, right? Yeah, that is old timey. Yeah. That dude has an eye patch. That dude has a sweet handlebar mustache that froze over. <laughs> <laughs> the candles, the the hat. I mean, yeah, he got like a weird pop collar thing. The, the old timey pop collar. This guy right here looks like. I, I I do say I'm very upset about what's happening out there with the the. Have you is seen he a the firefighter? Tr- Yes. This guy right here? Yeah. Do you think that looks that's like gonna it. tie do you think that's historically gonna somehow they're gonna try to tie back in like the whole firehouse of it all? <clears throat> Maybe. Um because be that cool. is definitely not a current firefighter's no, 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 outfit. No, no. Yeah. I, <laughs> unless it's like retro day. <laughs> <laughs> Which you don't want your fire department to do, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's lower not our equipment. Not a good safety. idea. <laughs> retro Hold day. The water brigade. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, got shit. Oh, that's pretty cool that they all just start erupting. Yeah. Okay, so whose apartment do you think he busted into? Podcast. I'm going to say that's Podcast's place, right? Maybe? Or Camille. The reason I say Podcast is because, and this is probably a stupid reason to think it, is that... Shoeboxes? This chair, this, this chair is oh, the a... gaming uh, chair? gaming chair <laughs> that would i would think that would be like camille camille's whatever like i think that would be his apartment like because it looks like that's coming out of that cupboard where it could have been uh you know oh, after yeah, the dude gets his horns like suddenly you know he can bust through i bet you will see this thing like freeze over or shatter the, the mercury uh thermostat paul rudd living his best life just marry her paul just yeah. marry her. And then take the Spangler last name because I don't like your current last name. The yeah, horns like, like moving? Yeah. Because yeah. like, yeah, when he plugs them in, they're pointed down. They're pointed down and curled. Like, I don't know if you remember that when they're hanging on the wall, they're yeah. they're curled and it's more like a circle. So yeah. to plug them in, they had to like start shifting. I think there's I think there's something to those horns, boys. They're alive. And also... Also, is this a different location, or is this just the golden location frozen I over? I think it's I the think golden that... location frozen, because it looks like the same yeah, that's what shield I... wall. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's got to be the frozen golden place. Like This happens like after he puts in the yeah. horns. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We're, we're figuring out some of the... Uh, that looks very much uh, uh, Ghostbusters, the original movie-esque. Yeah. Huh, but is there any significance to that? That must be where a dude lives. Is that is Dana's it, old apartment? Yeah, I was gonna say, is that no, Dana Barrett's not. rebuilt apartment? I mean, it could have been rebuilt, Jared. Okay, I suppose. It, yeah, I'm just. <laughs> it's not the same. It's not the same building. <laughs> no. Uh, this is where Jared said that it was worse than the previous Ice Age. Um, <laughs> like the previous Ice Age, uh, only worse. Oh no, this is worse. <laughs> yeah, spikes popping out of the ground. Uh, definitely not, definitely probably not a, an improvement of the previous Ice Age. Dude, that guy's just running belly free. I support you, brother. <laughs> I still think that that shot with him in the car is like a flashback to the first. Thing. Dun, 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 and there we get They've our got a, Ghostbusters vehicle. Yep, and we've got new protons. Sort of new proton packs. They look, yeah, they look modified. And notice when he shows up here, he's wearing a uniform. Which makes me think that, like, ooh, okay, and the orange and the, the orange, orange jacket, jacket from from when he's out there, and uh, you're looking very pale. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about you, my friend. You're looking very pale. So I think we get a better look at this later. But Janine is wearing something on her wrist. It's like a wrist-mounted blaster thing, which is cool. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it other than. That's cool. <laughs> oh, it's like hailing or snowing out that poor guy. <laughs> just get out of there, bro. The world's ending. Something about her just still turns me on. I'm not gonna <clears throat> yeah, there we go. There's the wrist okay. thing. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. 
You know what that kind of reminds me of is that Ghostbusters Extreme or whatever. Yeah, that'd be great if they had some uh, some callbacks to the Extreme Ghostbusters. Yeah, because that was that was kind of underrated. Uh, hey, an actual fire hose. <laughs> That's fire hose. Yeah, all right. <laughs> is that a, is that like one of the? Yeah, that's that's a blaster. That's so interesting that we're. I mean, go wild, man! It, it's a new world. Yeah. Jan- Janine's gonna be shooting stuff like she's a Mortal Kombat character <laughs> off of her wrist. You thought the part of, you thought having a nuclear bomb strapped to your back was ah <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm so glad we're going back, boys. Yeah. I am so glad we're going back. Oh, she looks just worse, man. She she's not aged well. No. <laughs> I love that it's Ray too. I hope Ray brought podcasts. I really do. <laughs> I hope it's just Ray and podcast. We know that Patton Oswalt's here because we'll see in just a moment Patton Oswalt and Ray dressed in the Ray's clothes that he's wearing when he is about to be attacked by the librarian uh now outside with the lions uh is the same. So I'll I'll make sure to stop there. <laughs> <laughs> do you think we get do you think we get stacked books mm. I, know they, I know they did it in afterlife i know they did it in afterlife but do you think we get stacked books again i don't think so i don't think so either do these things still existing mean that gozer is still very much around well mm. gozer's just trapped right in the yeah oh maybe this is after the containment unit gets damaged yeah that's a good point. Because these, these are the form of the destroyer. <laughs> the little <laughs> bastard destroyer. <laughs> he looks too old now. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> They're so the adorable, way. man. They're so adorable. <laughs> and there's Puker. <clears throat> Puker. Apparently there's an international trailer where we get to see his puke in action. What do you want? And that is the same buzzer setup too. Yep. What do you well, actually? I wonder if there's anything on her notebook. That was just thinking. What's on her notebook? Let's see. Oh man, I can't can't read it. We'll just assume it was nothing good. Yeah. But wouldn't that have been nice if we were able to sneak something out? What do you want? Annie Potts, you drive me wild with your strong woman energy. No, oh, Trevor, that's not. That's the same. Face. That's he's wearing a different shirt, but that looks like the same setting to where he was in the attic earlier. Probably good to go and fire off the proton packs in the attic. <laughs> or well, wherever he's at. Busting makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Here it comes. She is not. She she already knows she's not impressed about Stop. what's about to happen. Yeah. Nope. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're in love. I hope they're in love. Gosh dang it. All right. So we'll see uh, Pat and Oswalt and Ray here. Yeah. Yep. Uh, God, I'm so glad we're going back to the library. I can't stress that enough. Mm-hmm. I can't stress that enough. I wonder what the runtime is going to be on this movie. I bet it's like an the- hour 47. I mean, this is the only movie where I'm hoping for a three-hour <laughs> right yeah. I can watch Ghostbusters all day long. Oh, so good. Yeah, I don't think you're going to win, Lucky. This is pre-Horns. Oh, is but he stuff's really? still freezing, yeah. Oh, Or good. It, I... might be, it might be post-Horns. This might be no a horns. No, horns. no good. No horns. Good. Ah. Saying, it's either pre, pre-Horns or maybe... The horns are removed, and this is a last stand kind of thing. Oh, yeah. oh maybe. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, either way, good eye. Good eye on the no horns there. Now, is this proton? Also, the proton pack doesn't it's seem getting... to be working. No, and it's if we go, if you go forward, it looks like it's being froze in this next scene. Ooh, yeah. Ooh that's not good. Okay, so without the horns, it still has ice power. So does it? it uh, I'm so curious about how the yeah. death chill, because I don't think the I, I I don't know if it is one and the same as the death chill, or if it is harnessing the death chill. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm something interesting about the setup too, around the with the metal around and the door in the back. It almost looks like well, it almost looks like a TARDIS. Um, but that makes me think like again, I, I keep going back to museum for some reason. But anyways. I wonder if it's like blast doors and like the lab locked down. Could be. Yeah. And then they see the ice crawling up the building. That's pretty cool. I don't know why he's wearing sunglasses, but that's pretty cool too. Bill now this is, this is, this is, so this is. Looks like horns. we got horns. Yeah, that's so interesting now of when the confrontation happened. So this, so I guess it just, I feel like getting its horns back made it to where it could ice that's, up everything. That's in the fire. Now, is, is, is Lucky going to go back a little bit? Is she like all bundled up like she just got frozen? Because like Ooh. no one else is wearing that, but like. Yeah. But she's got the big jacket on, and I know in the like the last trailer it does show her get frozen at some point. Yeah, we see her eyeball starting to freeze. So is this like Not after cool. that kind of thing? Ooh, good questions, boys. Good questions, good eyes. Blah. Ugh. I I still think that that's this is the beginning. Like this is yeah. early in the movie. Yeah. Like the events crap. that lead. This to... is all part of the setup kind of thing. Yeah, to... it's the events that lead to the uh, William Atherton of it all kind of thing. Yeah. Probably, yeah, I'd, I'd think so. I could see this getting his attention. Yeah, <laughs> especially if he's the mayor. Especially since that taxi just like exploded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that the letters start to freeze. That's pretty cool. Huh. interesting interesting all of the interesting things i can't remember if there's anything that i think there after this oh yeah it's yeah slimer. 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 but hey let's see if we can gather anything else from this setting other than he's eaten a lot so that's curved... wearing the same shirt that he was wearing yes. okay there. yeah and it so is it a, a what's some okay yeah that was that okay i was looking at the other end that must have been that must be where the you stomp it but that seems really big for the maybe pedal, they redid right? it maybe I think they're back in the firehouse though, because when you, if you go back just a hair, you can see the a curved. One of those windows is curved, like at the top of the firehouse. Yeah. Oh, uh, here, right yeah, there, right here. Yeah. So I'm yeah. I'm I'm calling it that this is in the attic of the firehouse. What a disgusting job! Yeah. <laughs> you have to think that Winston and some of the other ones knew about this. Uh, so when uh when TJ when TJ made his uh, comment in our trailer reaction about how this is the firehouse i was like i i'm hoping this is like some hazing ritual that they're sending trevor up there that winston and ray and them are all aware that slimer's up there and like hey trevor why don't you go take care of it yeah <laughs> like, like, like hey not... why don't you go see if you can figure out what's making all that problems <laughs> in the attic and then <laughs> uh, trevor you turd oh he just he just looks disgusting yeah. And then bloop. <laughs> it spits uh, it out. <laughs> oh, oh, gross. What's he say? Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, March 22nd. Can't get here soon enough. All right, Sneaking so up on us. So we've we've went through we went through this trailer we we looked at all the pieces any quick theories from you boys about maybe any new thoughts that have popped in your in your skull as we've kind of processed tonight you know i'm hoping that it, it's not just like the other movies where it's it's a little bit of ghost busting a lot of setup to figure out who the big bad is and how to stop him you know, and a lot of stuff like that. I'm hoping that there's enough ghost busting characters to re actually see more like actual ghost busting yeah. going on, you know, with different ghosts like the puker and Slimer and the thing from the first of it, you know. No. Jared, have any new nuggets of wisdom popped in your brain as we've been discussing tonight? Not really. Um, I'm still just kind of, uh, and you know, and I almost in a way, uh, I almost in a way don't want, don't want them to, I kind of want to like, I, I like the trailers and I like a little bit more about, you know, a little bit more, 
more revealing and it is fun to talk about, but, uh, you know, quite honestly, it's like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying, how can I put this? I'm not trying to overthink it too much because I want to still have, you know, that not an element of surprise, but you know, I don't want to make a guess about something that's going to happen or where it's at. And then it be disappointed if it doesn't turn out that way, if that makes any sense, yeah. I'm just, but you know, I know at the same time we got to talk about it. So, and it, it, it is kind of fun trying to dissect what's going to be even more fun though, is after we all get to go watch it, we can go back and watch this trailer again and be like, Oh yeah, that's, this is where this happens. And wow, we were wrong about that or right about this or so, but no, I mean, Nothing really jumped out to me except um, if, as far as revealing the plot or anything. Yeah. It just kind of – except for like set locations and where they could be and, you know, how it could get there. So. Yeah. yeah. I So for me, I, I'm still firmly on on the train. I feel like the tr this new trailer and even like breaking it down and looking at it and, and Jared, you pointing out the fact that the horns were off at one point. I feel like the horns are the missing piece. And TJ, you've kind of commented on this before, uh, especially when I started harping on the horns last time we did a trailer reaction, uh, of this might be like the uh, offshoot version of this character's need, that how Gozer needed uh, Zul and Vince Clortho to fully manifest its power. This thing may need its horns to be whole and complete and to have maximum power. Because it clearly has ice power, but I don't think we see the full-on death chill destructive force until it plugs those horns back in. Which means that I don't think this creature is released from the orb, but it's waiting for someone to open that orb up so it can get what it needs. I think the orb might almost be... Kind of like a containment unit that trapped away, sealed away uh, some of this creature. And maybe there's something else that locked away this creature somewhere else. And, and it's kind of like two doors needing to be opened to fully complete it. But I, that's, where my, that's where my brain's now going. Is I think that thing's been waiting for someone to let its horns out. So it could go in there, get them, and freeze over everything and kill everybody. Yep. I kind of, um, that's, that's, that's what I'm leaning with with the information that I've got. I will say this, I think, and this isn't like a great spoiler guess or theory, this is a second movie in what I assume will at least be a three-part story, because everyone loves to make a trilogy. Mm -hmm. I, I assume we'll have some kind of ending that will set the stage uh, much more clearly than what the previous, what, what Afterlife did for this. Afterlife, the, the ending was just them driving into New York, and then Winston making a comment, and then we see the, the containment unit beeping red. I think this one will much more clearly set up potentially what the third next film will be. Uh, that's just kind of my guess out there. But I'm excited. I I I mean, I was already excited, right? We we love Ghostbusters. We were going to be jazzed about this no matter what. I mean, I even gave Ghostbusters answer the call a lot of a lot of hype in my build up and anticipation for it because I love Ghostbusters. But someone in the YouTube comments said that something about how this is done just look so magical and it seems like they're going to have a lot of fun with storytelling and that that caught my attention as maybe that's what ghostbusters been missing to really get over as a franchise like it won us over but it won us over with one movie and a cartoon series yeah like we we we, we all liked to a certain degree the ghostbusters 2 but really it was the first ghostbusters movie yeah but ghostbusters 2 didn't do this either it didn't have fun with what it could you have organized ghost busting. <laughs> like you have yeah. people that are going around shooting beams of like have fun with that. As TJ said, I want to see more ghost busted. I don't want to montage it. Let me see some ghost busting and have fun with your world. Let us see New York. And that's kind of been a big a big bummer and I'm sure that's a limitation to what you can do uh in the 80s with everything. But yeah, I'd kind of like and and the fact that we get to see Ecto-1 driving around trying to catch a ghost. That yeah. already checks a big box that we just didn't have beginning. Uh, and they almost had it in Ghostbusters 2 and cut it from the finished product with Possessed Ray driving Ecto crazily uh, through <laughs> the streets of New York. <laughs> which made it fun. into the montage. Which made it into the montage as we see Peter like, what's going on here? And they kind of looking at Ray, but we don't see Ray's face. If we'd have seen Ray's face, you would have seen the slightly possessed version of Ray that we then see later in the film. Uh, I always wondered about that scene where he was... 
where he like they hit a bump and he kind of turns and looks at him like yep. what is yeah yep so so it's actually Ray possessed driving like a mad person and going to try to kill them <laughs> <laughs> you know which was, uh, yeah I was gonna say just thinking about this trailer though it's like like the last movie did hit on the nostalgia like this trailer hits a lot on the nostalgia too like it literally has all the Ghostbusters together you know it shows you know the janine you know ghostbusters what do you want it shows the the gray lady it shows the you know new york public library so there's like a ton of nostalgia factors the hit with this trailer no you know what if ghostbusters 2016 had been this it had been introduction of new characters while maintaining the old characters and trying to show a transition between like we're getting too old for this stuff but we like your moxie. What do you think about signing up for 15, <laughs> 15 a week or 15 a month, whatever they offered Winston? Uh, another it was five, five a year. It was, yeah. it was five. Another five, five a year. <laughs> I've seen shit that would turn you white. Um, you know, I'm just thinking about this. Like, you know, with, you know, we're talking about, you know, doing a, a trilogy and stuff like that. But the Ghostbusters franchise, like with this movie, could really pick up, you know. Do you think there's going to be a series, like not an animated series, but like a live action series? Because with the way, like with the expansion of it, with the expansion of the team, the people, the labs and stuff like that. Like, do you think at some point there will be an HBO Max original series or something? I hope or so. Amazon original I, series? I, I, I hope so. Uh but I'm interested. I'm excited. Boys, I'm going to force you to keep talking about Ghostbusters, but not tonight. This has been Ray Junards. I've been Mr. Cack. That's been Nerd Jared. And that's been one tall, dark, and horny son of a gun, TJ. And we are out of here. Keep raging. Let us know what you think. Comments, follow, subscribe, like all the things. We'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.